Good afternoon, Bellevue seniors, families, and community members. I am Ivan Duran, and I am honored to serve as your superintendent. This is a challenging time in our school district, community, and world. I am grateful for our staff. See about that, a little technical. I'm grateful for our staff, families, and especially you, our students, because of the creative ways you have responded to the public health crisis we are all facing. We, our educators, school leaders, and support staff, miss seeing you in our classrooms and schools every day. We care about you and we want to meet your needs in the best possible way during this time. The goal of today's virtual town hall is to give you, our seniors, information about our plans to support you and your families this spring. Bellevue staff and community members want to help you be creators of your future world, and we want to partner with you to identify how you would like to finish your final semester as Bellevue students. We join you and others in our community, the nation and the world, as we figure out how to confront one of the greatest health threats of our time, a threat that profoundly affects every citizen on this planet. But for me, the impact is more local, as my first concern is about you, our students. I am sad because one of the most impacted groups is you, our seniors, who will be graduating this spring. I recognize that this is a time of loss for you, from time with your friends, to participating in sports and performing arts activities, traditional rituals such as prom and graduation. I encourage you to be kind to yourselves and to others during this time of change. I also want to remind you that our counselors are on call should you want to talk with someone about how you are feeling or challenges you may be experiencing. Please reach out to your counselor by email. Email addresses are available in the staff section of each school's website. If you need to talk to a counselor about an urgent issue, please call 425-456-4445. Bellevue's Counselor Mental Health Line. Although we have never experienced a global crisis like this one, as a school district and community, we are figuring out how to do our work in new ways, and we are figuring out how to work together in new ways. Because of this, we are also in a time of opportunity and creativity. Bellevue staff and I want to honor you for the accomplishments you have achieved and earned. High school graduation is a rite of passage. It reflects your hard work in meeting the requirements established by the Bellevue Board of Education and the state of Washington. It is also a time of celebration, joy, which we want to continue. Our school principals will be holding virtual town halls to follow up with you about next steps. The Bellevue Board of Education Bellevue staff and I are excited to hear the ideas that we know you will generate with your school leaders about what the rest of the school year will look like for you and your families. We look forward to working with you to create new ways to celebrate your academic and personal accomplishments. School staff will be collaborating with you to reinvent many activities from graduation ceremonies that you may want to hold virtually or postpone or do something we haven't yet imagined to creating something new to celebrate your senior year and graduation. We are here to support you. I am confident that you are finding new ways to connect with your friends. And as a generation that has grown up with technology and social media, I know that you will find new and innovative ways to reclaim your senior year and define what it's going to look like for all of you. I am now very honored to introduce Dr. Patty Siegworth, one of our executive directors of schools. She has been working tireless in the background to organize and, and to plan the best way to support all of you. Dr. Siegworth, I hand it off to you now. Thank you, Dr. Duran. Good afternoon. Uh, we really appreciate you joining us today. I know that I have spent significant time thinking about you during these challenging times. I spent the last 34 of my 35 years in education at the high school level as a teacher, an administrator, and a high school principal. And know I recognize the impact this is having on our students, and particularly you, our seniors. Many of you have looked forward to this time for a very long time, and for some, even since kindergarten. 
I want you to know that I'm really sorry that you have been so adversely impacted by this pandemic, and I want you to know that we're working really hard behind the scenes to help you through this time. You are one of our district's highest priorities, and we're here to support you. I want to thank you for sending your questions in advance. Uh, that was really helpful. I'm going to start off and address some of the high level questions that you that we've received related to grading, testing and so on. And then I'm going to transition into some of those questions that relate to senior activities and events, as I know that's an area of importance and significance for all of us. One of the questions that we've been receiving recently has to do with um, grading, progress reporting, the impact on uh, transcripts, and I want you to know at this moment as I'm speaking, there's no final determination related to grading and credit for the rest of the quarter or semester, though I do anticipate some information to be communicated in the very, very near future. Our district has been working collaboratively with our Bellevue Education Association, which is our teachers union, and we are uh, finalizing those specifics. So I appreciate your patience and thank you. you you'll hear something very soon. Many of the questions that we received had to do with the status of A, B, and IB testing, and are they continuing? If so, in what capacity? And we have been trying to disseminate information. We've been sending emails and things. Um, we've been posting information on our website. Um, AP testing is continuing, and we do encourage each of our students that we're planning to take um, an AP test to continue to do so. They have solidified the dates of the AP testing. It's May 11th through the 22nd, and they have some makeup dates for June 1st through the 5th. Um, it'll be in a different format than uh, you may be accustomed to. Um, it will be online, so you can be doing that from the comfort of your home. And they are only going to be covering material content that was covered prior to school closures. Um, the exams are expected to take about 45 minutes. Um, they are going to administer the exams at the same day, same time worldwide. Uh, so um, you can find the actual testing schedule online with the college board, college board. There are a few classes that are going to be submitting portfolios versus taking an online test. So look at the College Board site for specifics related to that as well. Um, when you do sign up for your, um, when you do administer your test, it is important that you log in approximately 30 minutes prior to the testing time just to make sure that the program's working efficiently for you. And then as far as IB, IB has canceled their exams. Um, that being said, if you're in IB classes, you do need to complete the internal assessments by April 20th, so that's coming up here pretty quick. And then Interlake, which is our IB school, is required to submit coursework for each IB candidate to, um, to IB. You'll still be able to have the opportunity to earn the diploma. Um, we have posted information on our website and we'll continue to send you information as it becomes available. We have some students that were pursuing the International Spanish Academy Diploma, and they were relying heavily on the stamp test um, as one of the components of completion of that diploma. And students that are seniors who are still missing an element for the ESA diploma Will, we will have facilitated testing for you. We're not going to allow that to be a barrier for you, and we will make it work for the seniors that need that piece to complete their IB diploma. Similarly, we've had some students that were worried that they had not yet taken the world language competency credit testing, and they needed those credits for graduation. And we have some flexibility in credits right now from the state if you're a senior and you're in need of that world language competency credit test um, and you signed up for the remaining test at Sammamish High School, there was just one, you will be contacted by May 1st about that testing status. Along the testing lines, um, we have some 
seniors that were relying on taking the spring state smarter balanced assessment in math and or English language arts. And they were planning on utilizing that score to meet the requirement for the math or ELA grad requirement. And they were worried that that test is no longer available to them. If we can't meet that grad requirement for you in another way, given the state's given us some flexibility, we will contact those uh, seniors that need that and we will schedule a separate session for just those seniors to be able to take that exam. But you will hear from us if we can't figure out another way to help you meet that requirement, given some guidelines that we've been receiving from the state. And then we've also heard from seniors that are saying, you know, I am concerned about a current state in one of my classes or more of my classes. Who do I go to? How do I get some help? And we'd ask if you're if you're having challenges in a particular class, start with your teachers. They do recognize the current situation is incredibly unique and it's involved a substantial amount of change for everybody and they are committed to supporting you. If you need additional support, reach out to your counselor or an administrator. Um, we also have a robust senior support plan that we've implemented. We have 44 amazing skilled senior support staff that are pushing in to select core classes in social studies, in English and in math just for our seniors. And they're making weekly contact with those seniors. If you find that you're in need of that level of support, with a designated staff member behind the scenes helping you, please contact your counselor. We will find a way to get that support for you. Um, uh, together, we've got this. So uh, don't hesitate to reach out. And then, we, of course, we've received a lot of questions about graduation, about prom, senior assembly, and we want you to know that those events have been weighing really heavily on our hearts and minds. As for many of us, those are memories that stay with us for a lifetime. Uh, we want you to know that we are really committed to working with you and with your classmates to determine what is the best next course of action related to those. Um, the outcomes for graduation and senior prom will rely incredibly heavily on your desires while ensuring that safety stays paramount. Given the need for physical distancing and avoidance of large crowds, um, graduation, senior prom, they will require adjustments or postponement, but that will be um, up to you. Many of you, the facilities that we've reserved for these events, as you likely are aware, are not available currently. And based on the guidance we've been receiving from varied agencies, we don't anticipate that we will have access uh, to that level of a large capacity um, event or a facility, nor will we be able to facilitate an event of that size. That being said, what it does look like for graduation for you and for prom and for senior assembly, um, while different, it will be based on your needs, your wishes, and your creativity. So you will be a significant voice in that determination and outcome. We need you to lean in. We need you to get your creative voices flowing, and we need you to be part of that solution and problem solving. Lastly, we've heard questions about senior party. And I want you to know, given that we just recently also learned that schools are closed till the end of the year, our principals at each building are working closely with the parents that are hosting this event for you. They're in the very early stages of discussions, um, but they will keep you informed of updates related to senior party and next steps. I suspect your involvement, engagement, and participation in that will be needed as well. I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to Eva Collins. Eva is our Deputy Superintendent of Student Academic Performance and Instructional Leadership, and she's going to share with you some ways with which you can help drive the decision making related to graduation and other really impactful 
activities for senior. Keep in mind your voice matters. Now's the time to help determine your destiny. As each of these events are actually slated to honor you, our seniors, so please join us in this work. Thank you, Dr. Zuckman. My name is Eva Collins, and I'm the Deputy Superintendent in the school district, and I'm really thrilled and privileged to be here at your senior town hall and to talk about um, a challenge that we have for you. So my purpose today is to try to ignite your creative and innovative problem solving abilities. So here we go. <laughs> um, some of you have been with us since kindergarten, and some maybe have just joined us this year in the district. Regardless, you may not have known our vision for you in the Bellevue School District, which is on the next slide. <laughs> um, I want to share it with you, and you might be thinking, why are you sharing your vision with us now? We're about to graduate, but it's really important in terms of shaping the challenge that we want to pose to you and to get your creative thinking. So our vision for you has been since kindergarten is to affirm and inspire you to learn and thrive as creators of your future world. You may have heard Dr. Duran say creators of your future world. I think you heard Dr. Seagrass say that. And so we're going to talk about that a little bit and how that plays into your graduation, your prom, um, your senior party, all of these things that you were looking forward to this spring as seniors. So all along since kindergarten, we've been teaching you to read and write and compute, but to what end and for what purpose? And our purpose really has been, and our larger goal is our, to prepare you to understand world issues, you know, like poverty, like climate change, racism, things that impact our world and people, but also to empower you to think creatively and work collaboratively to lead for positive change. How can you be the change agent um, and be creators of your future world? We want you to be impactful, and we, we've been trying to teach you that since kindergarten. So. Now you have your ultimate challenge. There is a global issue and it's having an immediate impact on you. And so we want you to be creators of your future world and think about, so how can we lead for the positive change given this global situation? Okay, so in this slide, you, you'll see that we crossed out social from social distancing and instead said physical distancing. The idea here is that we want you to continue to be social. And there are many social activities that are happening that you're, you might feel like, oh, we're missing out. But instead of thinking about it as missing out, think of it as we're going to just do, be doing these things differently. So what are some ideas and some ways that we can do these things differently? All of these cherished traditions like assemblies and prom and graduation. So um, as you think about these, we want you to think about how can we be collaborative? How can we be innovative? And how can we be creators of our future world? So this is our challenge for you. We want you to be thinking about what are the things that you're that you're missing? What are some of the activities? And we have not named them all. And what, what are some ideas on how you can um, resolve those? So I'm here to give you just a few ideas to get your creative juices flowing. You'll probably come up with better ideas. So this first one is um, from Cobb County, Georgia. And here's a high school choir that um, they were missing out on singing together and so they did a virtual um, concert and you can see that each of them were singing um, by themselves but they put it all together to, to make a concert which is really cool. This next example shows um, this is a high school in Oregon that had a virtual prom. So this was complete with a DJ. Even the teachers got dressed up and were dancing. And so um, they were still able to have their prom and to wear the clothes that they wanted to wear to prom. Um, they just did it virtually. This next one is um, University of Pennsylvania. And these guys used Minecraft. Um, and I think this is probably you're thinking, wow, this is an opportunity for us to really put those Minecraft skills um, to work and they used Minecraft and had a Minecraft virtual graduation, which is pretty cool. This next one shows the university of uh, a university in Japan and they use these rope, rope remote controlled robots and each 
graduate had their picture on a tablet and the tablet was um, connected to a robot and then they participated in a virtual ceremony, which is pretty cool. I don't know exactly how they did it. It looks pretty um, complex, but I know you guys could figure that out if that's what you wanted to do. Uh, so these next couple ideas came from districts um, right here in Washington State, and one is an idea that you could do a car parade graduation. So just like you do a drive through at um, to get fast food, it could be a drive through graduation where you would just get in your car and drive through. You could decorate your car like you do for homecoming or whatever, but it's just another idea. And this next one is my personal favorite. And you may not recognize this, but this is called drive-in movies. <laughs> Back in my day, drive-in movies were really popular and you would sit in your car and watch the movie and you would have a speaker or you would use your um, radio or nowadays your phone to listen to the movie. Um, now you have we have movies in the park, but it would be the same idea that people could come in their cars, the seniors maybe would all park together and they could maybe even still do the drive-through um, parade to collect their but you would have the graduates portrayed on the screen. Um, the, the folks who were maybe be giving speeches would be on the screen and everyone would be able to participate and your family could all participate either virtually or by sitting in their car. Um, and this one comes from the um, United States Olympics team. And I don't know if you saw this ad on TV, but I saw it and it really um, made an impact on me and they talked about um, having really good team spirit about the situation and what I liked about it was their line about not denied just delayed and so another idea as Dr. Seagrith mentioned is that we could postpone graduation so that you could have an in-person graduation and do it at a later date so that's one idea. And then finally, this is just an idea about um, school spirit. I mean, I know every day is pajama day for you now, um, but here you see a high school student wearing um, a mask that he made that represents the college that he's going to go to. So you could think about making um, the face masks that represent your high school and having high school spirit or the college that you're going to go to. These are just ideas for you around school spirit. So what's up next for you is that you need to attend your high school town hall, share your ideas, and then just begin collaborating and innovating. We really believe in you, class of 2020. We know you can do it and we're super excited to hear what ideas you come up with. And now I'm going to hand it back over to Dr. Duran. Wonderful, thank you, Eva. Appreciate you sharing those ideas and really look forward to the different innovative ways and designs that our seniors decide to come up with different solutions for the events that you really want to um, make come alive. So now I'm going to switch a little bit now and I'm going to be asking um, Deb Kraft, who is our director of K through to K through 12 counseling to join me. So Deb, if you want to go ahead and pull your screen up, I've got some questions that came in that I actually like to pose to you and just have you uh, go ahead and respond to them. So if you may want to show your video and I'll start up with the first question. So um, Deb, who would I contact if I need to talk with someone um, if I'm feeling sad or depressed? What resources are being provided for students and staff um, to aid in taking care of their mental and physical health during this time? We would like you to call if you're having thoughts of hurting yourself, please call the suicide hotline at 1-800-273-8255. Um, that number is also on the district website on the COVID virus website. You can reach out to your counselor that email addresses are on the staff website or you could reach out to a teacher that you know well. You can send them an email and they'll respond as soon as they can. Please put urgent in the subject of your email because that'll get your att their attention that much quicker. If you don't feel comfortable doing that or you didn't get a response quick enough, you can always call Teen Link. You can call the Bellevue School District Counseling slash Mental Health Hotline and that number is 425-445-4445. Um, no, it's 425, sorry. 425-445. Yeah, 445-4445. Okay, then the Bellevue 
school district nurse hotline is 425-456-4444. You can also, if you have insurance, you can check with your um, doctors or you can check with your insurance company. A lot of insurance companies are posting on their websites options for people to be able to contact, ta contact therapists as well. On our website, the BSD counseling website, there's some um, resources. There's also some resources on the COVID-19 resources page. Um, or if you want to text home to the crisis text line, it's 741741 is the number and you just text home and they will respond immediately. There are some suggestions for anti-anxiety stuff on the COVID website and on the district counseling website, but one app that you might want to try is the Calm app. Um, there's also an Anxiety in Youth app that's there. There's Happify that's there, and there's a really good guide to living with worry and anxiety amidst global uncertainty that you can link on on our district webpage. Wonderful. Thank you. Those are really great ideas and appreciate you making some suggestions and we will make sure and have this all sent out to uh, all of you participating in this uh, virtual town hall. I know this is a challenging time in Devon. You know, recently I read an article that talked about how many people are experiencing grief during this period, you know, so, you know, just from the grief of not having the usual routines, experiences, you know, what you're used to going, you know, to school or to classes, being with your friends. So the research you provide are really great ideas for how we can think about, we can further support our students. So another question that has come in was about if I have not yet completed my high school and beyond plans, what should I do? Well, this just to reassure you, this is a new a new law, not new, but it it's um it's been um, expanded by the state law 1599 that passed last spring. So um, on April 1st, each senior and their family got an email saying this is what you need to do. So it's pretty simple. All you have to do is log into Naviance using Clever and then um, you can click on there's four parts that you have to do right now. So one of them is to do a career interest survey. And if you click, go under careers and you click on that, no problem. You can get it done in 20 minutes. Another one is to either enter an activities resume or a personal resume, or you can upload a resume if you've already made one for college applications or for a job application that you had or an internship. You can upload it into your documents file. If you have trouble doing that, then one of the college and career advisors can help you with that and we can mark that done. Um, the next thing you need to do is the game plan survey, which is just a matter of setting a goal. I want to go into the military. I want to go to college. I want to pursue getting a certificate, whatever it is that you decide to do next year in your post high school. Very exciting, great adventure. And the last one is to complete the four year plan. The four year plan can be a little frustrating. I'm willing to admit that. Please don't pay any attention to the credits. Please don't pay any attention to the message that you didn't pass this course because we don't export from Synergy into Naviance. We don't export your grades or whether you pass the class or not. So don't pay any attention to that. Just put the plan in of what you want to do. If a specific course isn't there, then pick an equivalent. Like if I can't find AP um, Lit, then I can just put in English 11 and you'll be good. Last piece is the fifth section, which is um, the senior survey. It's been posted, I posted it. Um, if you haven't yet decided where you're gonna go next year, you don't have to have it completed until the end of May. If you've already made up your mind, then go ahead and finish that survey and you'll be all checked off for all five things. Okay, great. Thank you for that. We've got a couple more questions here. I want to just keep going through these. I think they're important information. We want to make sure and really deeply appreciative for uh, our seniors and other people who contributed early by sending us some of the questions so we can really have some solid answers for all of you. So if I have not yet completed the community service requirement, how can I complete my community service hours needed for graduation? Um, the 
the dis the executive directors have agreed to waive the 10 hours for senior year now. So if you finished your 30 hours, then you are going to get met on your transcript. If you haven't finished your 30 hours and you just need to record them, then you need to log into your Naviance account and click on X2Vol and record those hours so we can verify them and we import them then into Synergy. Um, so those people and those need to be done by April 25th because we're going to do the next import on the 26th. So if you haven't imported your hours, please do so. That'd be great. Um, if you haven't managed in seven semesters to get your community service done, then we will waive your community service obligation. It will say waived on your transcript rather than met. So I just want to make that clear. Those people who've completed it, you're going to get met. Those people that haven't completed it, you will get waived. Great. <laughs> OK, if my cumulative grade point average, my GPA is currently less than 2.0 and I'm a senior, how do I get a waiver of this requirement for graduation? Well, the good news is, is that because you don't have a chance or we don't know that you're going to have a chance yet, you might, but we don't know that for sure. Um, to improve your GPA with your eighth semester grades, we are just going to waive that requirement. And so you don't need to worry about that part. You're going to graduate no matter what your GPA is. Great. OK, a couple more for you, Deb, and then we'll be trying to make another transition. Another one of our team members. How do I order my transcript for my college or university? Well, in the High School and Beyond plan, there's a senior survey and one of the questions is where would you like us to send your final transcript? Um, those transcripts will be ready the last few days of June or early July and we will send them off to the college. You can pick one place um, for us to send it and we will do that, but you have to put it in that survey. You have to tell us where it is or we won't know what to do. If you change your mind, then you can go back and alter the survey or you can send your counselor an email and we will figure it out. Or you can send me an email, crafty at bsd405.org. All right, Deb, I got one more question for you and I think this is an important one. This is something that um, I've heard discussed uh, across our region and state and really across the nation because I think as we think about this long term closure, there's a lot of worry and concern around you know, what type of impact this is going to have you know, on, on students long term, which is not only our, our um, seniors, but all of our, our high school students. And so what's the impact um, that this long term closure will have on transcripts and how will colleges view this? Well, as many of you know, when you got letters of acceptance from colleges, they may have said you need to continue at your present um, grade point or level of achievement, or they may have said something like um, no grades will be allowed lower than a C. That isn't going to be true for this last semester. Um, the colleges all it's a national problem, so the colleges are well aware that some schools are just going to have credit, no credit. Some schools will have grades, but that all the learning is being done now, e-learning, and so they're just going to take you as you stand and you will not, there will be no consequences or no one will be um, asked not to come because you have credit, no credit on your transcript or your grades are not what we'd hope they would be. So that's the good news. Wonderful. Well, great. Well, I just want to thank you for all the time, effort, and energy you've been spending to, you know, come up with ideas and suggestions and organize the ways to continue to support our students. So thank you for your work, Deb. All right. I'm going to make a transition now and I'm going to ask Jeff Lowell, who is our director of athletics and activities to join us. And Jeff, as you log on and uh, pull up your video screen, I've got a number of questions that, that have come in that I want to have you address. So please welcome Jeff Lowell. Hi. Hi, Jeff. All right. Do I see it? Where's your video at? I'm up. I'm OK, gotcha. Very yep. good. All right, Jeff, I've got a number of questions that pertain specifically towards athletics and activities that uh, love to have you address. So um, if I was trying to get a, a a fiscal education credit waive through the regular process. What am I supposed to do now? Um, as uh, there, there are certain um, certain 
graduation requirements that uh, that are allowed to be waived in PE is, is one of those. Uh, and there are certain conditions that uh, that still need to be met if that waiver is going to be granted. So if, uh, if, if a senior is looking for a PE credit waiver uh, and they have a doctor's note stating that uh, that there is a physical disability that prevents that senior from participating in a PE class, um, even a PE class that can be modified to meet their, uh, their disability. Uh, if it's a, a senior who is enrolled in a military science and tactics course, uh, also known as ROTC, uh, or if it's a senior that's uh, you know that that is uh, belongs to a religion that prohibits uh, participation in a physical education course, uh, then then those seniors would be able to still apply for that uh, that waiver of the PE credit. Um, and all the senior needs to do at that point is is uh, email their counselor uh, to talk through those conditions and to get their assistance in in that waiver process. Okay, wonderful. Thank you very much. Right. Next question is if I was trying to get PE credit, physical education credit through the directed athletics process, what am I supposed to do now? Uh, thank you. And uh, the, the directed athletics uh, process is actually handled by uh, by my department. Um, and there's there's a couple of different scenarios that um, well, before we get into those, there's there's two parts to that particular process. One is actually participation in a sport, either a, a Bellevue school district sport or a community-based sport. And then the second part of that process is uh, completing an assessment, actually meeting proficiency on an assessment that uh, that's actually uh, run through my department as well. Um, and so there are a couple of scenarios that may have played out this year. We might have seniors who completed a fall or winter sport, either through the Bellevue School District or through a community program, uh, but have not completed the assessment what those students need to do is to uh, to complete the correct application and then make sure that they register for and meet proficiency on the assessment at either the uh, the April 29th assessment date, the May 20th assessment date, and then we've added a third date in uh, that's June 3rd. So if, uh, if a student who's completed that, that participation in fall or winter but still need the assessment, all they've got to do is complete the assessment. Uh, for those seniors who have not completed the participation uh, component of this because they were hoping to use a, a spring sport, so they were on a Bellevue School District roster or a community-based roster uh, at the time of the closure, May 13th, and their intention was to finish that participation, we want you to go through the application process anyway and just get verification that you were on that particular roster and then still complete the assessment. Um, I can my my department, either myself or my assistants, can actually uh, can actually answer any question uh, that any one of these uh, any one of these seniors have, um, and make sure that we uh, we walk them through this. Our intention is to make sure that they get through this particular part of the process with uh, as little trouble as possible. Um, one of the things that uh, that that every senior who needs to take that assessment needs to understand is that the assessment we're going to we're putting together a process to do the assessment through teams right now. Uh, it's been an in person proctored test that we've done online uh, and we're putting together a teams process um, and, and finishing that. So those individuals who have registered uh, for the assessment through my department page. Uh, they will be getting individual emails a week ahead of the assessment that explains what they should uh, have in place, what they should be ready for. Um, and and that in, uh, that email will be coming from my assistant, Andrea Arnone, um, uh, to their uh, school district email account. OK, wonderful. Thank you, Jeff. I know this time of year is also when we have a number of um, athletic programs that we would normally be able to participate in. So what is the status of spring sports right now? Uh, yeah, we all uh, we all held out hope that there was going to be some type of a season. And when I say all of us, I mean everybody across the state. Anybody involved in athletics uh, wanted to see kids out on fields participating, uh, doing what they love to do un under the lights um, for the last time in their career. Uh, the we we uh, have been working um, myself and the uh, the building athletic directors have uh, been in contact with our our colleagues across the Kinko Conference and then. Uh, uh, with the state association, the WIA, um, on some somewhat of a daily basis to, to figure out what their guidance uh, would be. Um, and on April 6th, uh, the WIA did release um, 
a clarification of Gover Governor Inslee's uh, order. And what they uh, what they shared with all K-12 schools is that uh, Governor Inslee's orders included the cancellation of all in-person extracurricular athletics and activities through the remainder of the school year. And that included all practices, all regular season contests, uh, all postseason tournaments and championship events. Everything was canceled uh, through the end of the school year. Uh, so at this point, uh, we, uh, we, the Athletic and Ath Activities Department, are working with um, our finance and our business services departments uh, to start processing refunds for spring sports participation uh, in those transportation fees that we end up having to collect uh, for, for spring sports as well. So those are underway. Uh, and then currently, uh, the supervisors of athletics and student support at each building are working with uh, spring coaching staffs. And they're contemplating any and every way possible uh, that we can think of to honor athletes from the spring season um, and make sure that they they get some of that uh, that attention and the honor that they deserve for the the work that they've put in uh, through their careers. Okay, great. Yeah, so it's going to be another opportunity for how we can think about creatively and innovative ways to to recognize and honor our our athletes um, during this time. Definitely. So on that note, uh, what should a student do if they need to return athletic equipment to the school and knowing that our schools are closed right now? Uh, what I would encourage every student to do is to, to just go through all of their uh, all of their belongings, their uh, their closets, their garage, their cars and collect everything and have it in one place. That's the first thing that I would encourage them to do, uh, because right now the district is really working hard to develop a structure for students and families to uh, to be able to not only collect back uh, from them what is school uh, school property, uh, but also to provide those students an opportunity to get into the schools so they can collect their own non-emergent items. Uh, they may have something in their locker still. They may have something in their uh, their sports locker still, um, and we want to make sure that they get an opportunity to get those items um, and get them in a timely fashion. Um, so this definitely includes athletic equipment. That plan is not yet finalized, um, but once it is, students and families are going to be informed of that process, uh, likely through their school um, and school-based communications. Okay, great. And then uh, shifting it from um, athletic to some activities, uh, what's the status of overnight field trips or day field trips scheduled after April 27th? Uh, this is one that's been an ongoing conversation also, and this is a, a conversation that, that um, there are a number of us around the district that are, are continuing to collaborate and, and discuss um, what, would have, uh, what would be in the best interest of, uh, of all kids in, in, our, in our district. Um, and, and unfortunately, what we've had to do is send, uh, send messages out yesterday that uh, you know, given the school closure and the fact that it's going to go through the end of the school year and potentially beyond, um, you know, all what uh, the decision was, uh, and it was made yesterday, like I said, messages sent out to, uh, to individual groups that all overnight and day field trips uh, have been canceled. Um, so any out of district uh, transportation is, has been canceled through August 31st at a minimum. And we'll revisit at the end of the summer um, how that student travel will look moving forward. Okay, great. All right, and then I know this uh, last question I had for you around clubs and activities is something that has been, uh, we've had a number of inquiries in, not only for this uh, town hall, but even previous to when we had the initial closure and we were anticipating um, being closed for April 24. So when can clubs and activities begin to conduct remote meetings? Uh, well, club advisors, um, you know, we have, uh, we have a, in, in each one of these clubs, we have district teaching staff um, running the clubs in, in many, many situations. Um, and because that's uh, that teaching staff uh, still to this day remain heavily immersed in developing these new and unique ways to try and engage and in support uh, student learning, um, it, it necessitated a postponement of formal club activities. And but what we've encouraged, um, you know, from the day of the closure is that informal uh, meetings could end up taking place. Uh, the difference between a formal and informal social gatherings, just like uh, we've heard all afternoon, those social opportunities. We wanted kids to connect. What we what we don't have or didn't have the capacity to do immediately is to take on uh, those formal, um, you know, club decisions, uh, uh, securing new events or new uh, new venues for events, or uh, you know, committing monies to uh, to future um, you know future events and things of the sort. Those would be formal kind of activities. 
Uh, what I have uh, what I've spent the last 48 hours really putting together is some uh, some very clear guidance. Um, what I what I hope is some very clear guidance for ASB clubs and activities um, to, to operate under for the remainder of the school year and then through the summertime. Uh, I my intent is really to have that plan finalized and to inform students and staff no later than the beginning of the week after spring break. So I'm really targeting April 20th. Uh, for that particular guidance, knowing that this is something that everybody is really looking forward to getting back involved in. Um, and then there was one additional question, Dr. Duran, that I know uh, people have have on their mind, and that has to do with yearbooks um, mm, and whether or not great. yearbooks are still being published. Thank you. Uh, and the answer to that is um, the intention of every high school, the two choice schools and all five of our middle schools is to get a yearbook produced uh, and get it into the hands of their students. What we don't have right now is what that may end up looking like, and it may end up being different depending on which company a school used. Um, for example, two of our schools used a company that had to close their operation for a period of time, and they won't be able to produce a book, and it won't be here uh, until probably late summertime. So a plan for those students may look different than another school. So we're putting that information together, and as soon as it comes available, uh, we'll make sure that those school communities all know what that plan is. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, Jeff. Really pre appreciate the answers you provided and all the work that your team is doing to you know, plan for our seniors and other students during this challenging time. Okay, so we are nearing the end of our, um, our content that we have for this virtual town hall. And so I really just want to thank everybody that's been on in planning this. Um, Dr. Patty Seaworth, um, who has been again been point person and leading out our work to really think about how we can best support our our seniors and I just have to tell you that as I've reviewed the plan and looked at all the work that's been um, created the way our educators have been involved I just have a lot of faith and confidence that you know we we'll really be able to do our best job to support yeah, all of you so thank you Patty for your work uh, Eva Collins thank you for your work and your time today and coming up with those creative ideas um, I did have a smile when you shared the the drive-in picture because I'm sure it's probably you know so many things were from generations you know how differently that we uh, have used things but you know drive-ins you know I know when I was growing up was something that was a big time big deal and now they're really difficult to find um, they're now replaced with people having um, screens in their backyard and projectors you know where they can show movies so um, thank you um, Deb Kraft thank you for all the work that you're doing to support our seniors and to support our staff because we know that uh, for everyone that's been involved during this time and whether it's the grief or a loss or just the changes that we're going through you know we all at times need to be able to pause and and talk with somebody about what we're experiencing or feeling and just for a healthy way to get that out so that we're not stuffing this stuff inside of us so thank you for the work you're doing and Jeff again just thank you for everything you guys have been working and trying to think about athletics and activities and all the things that we can do to support our seniors and I uh, know there's a lot of loss with students not be able to do the normal activities and athletics during the springtime, but know that there will be another time for that to come. So thank you. So um, seniors, just directly for you, I just uh, just know I have deep empathy and um, um, sadness for you during this time. And I hope you know that we are here to support you and really ask that you now take this opportunity to take those emotions and energy that you've been carrying and really come up with the innovative and creative ways to design what you really think is going to be you know best to meet your needs um, for our families also to share with you have a lot of empathy and a feeling for you in terms of all that you've been having to go through you know we've heard a number of stories from our families you know who are trying to work at home have students at home and trying to find that balance i think we're all um, dealing with that right now i was a little worried with some noise in the background because i just uh uh, the mail person just showed up at my house and my dog goes crazy so hopefully you didn't hear that but uh, it happens and so we're just now in really different times and I just feel everybody just needs to adjust and then uh, just really have to big big shout out for all of our educators and staff I mean I think we just have been doing a lot of work you know when the when we first heard about you know the closure and move forward to this you know we had already had some plans in place but um, the amount of work that we've had to do to really ensure that we are providing, you know, nutrition to our families and students who need that that level of support, the child care, um, the technology, the transportation. We've had so many different people involved in this work and just deeply appreciative of everyone's efforts to really try to support our students and our families as best as possible. 
I know as I talk with my colleagues from other districts, you know, I just deeply feel blessed that we here in Bellevue have been able to do a lot of things to ensure that we are doing the best things to um, support our students. And also just uh, want to thank our school board who have really been supportive in helping us come up with ideas and offering suggestions and ways to advocate at national and state levels and continually um, helping us think um, outside the box to ensure that we are really coming up with good ideas and providing the most consistency to support um, our students in the best ways possible. And I just want to uh, remind everybody that this town hall is going to be posted online. And so we will be posting that information and the information that was shared today with all of you. And as a reminder, with us, the dates are uh, one of the next steps that we have in place for all of you is the senior town halls that will be posted by your school um, principals and administrators and know that we'll be handing this off to them now to facilitate the conversations for you to really be thinking about, you know, what are the different ways and ideas that you're going to come up with. So we're super excited to see um, what you come up with. Uh, my final thoughts and uh, comments today is just that, you know, even though that our buildings are closed, uh, I may have misspoke a little bit earlier, and I think sometimes we do this um, in cases where we have said our schools are closed, but I want to just re-emphasize and state that our buildings are closed. However, education is open here in Bellevue, learning is open in Bellevue, innovation is open in Bellevue, and we are doing thing, everything we can to support all of our students from our early learners all the way up through our, our seniors and beyond. And just know that we will continue to work tirelessly to support all of you. We look forward to what you choose to do because innovation, creativity is, is now wide open. I think it's always been there, but more than ever, we look forward to you as creators of a future world and what you're gonna create, not only for today and this spring, but for the future for this world. We all need it and we need all of you to, to step up and be the leaders that you are in the way that you've learned and gained so many new things um, here in our district. So thank you all for everything that you're doing. Please let us know what questions, comments you have and look forward to seeing you in another virtual setting and down the road when we can have more face-to-face. -face. I look forward to connecting with all of you. Thank you all. Uh,